MMASucker.com here with Brian Ebersol. Brian, uh, you're still uh, sporting the arrow, I can see. Didn't get a chance to get rid of it. No, it's a one month notice here, bro. I mean, do you like do you like fighting that way? I mean, I mean, a lot of people. Some guys like the time off. They can go out and hang out in Thailand or whatever. Uh, but uh, you get one month. Do you prefer that? Well, I wrestled my whole life, so we had a season, and yeah. that, it was it was 50 matches, 45 matches, right there in three three and a half months. Um, and I took that into my my MMA career. I, I booked myself just about every month. When I got kind of psychologically or physically bothered, I would take time off. Um, reset, do what I had to do, uh, and then I'd jump back into training and start making calls and, and get booked again, and I'd put three or four back together. So I was doing the same thing almost, like three and four month seasons and blocks yeah. of time where I was at my, my highest peak fitness. So yeah. it, it's preferable, like doing a 12-week camp and fighting once for 15 minutes, you come out healthy, and you're looking going, I want to do this again. Yeah. Like, why do I got to waste that hard work? I don't want to like take time off and then jump right back into the the cardio and the hill sprints and the crossfit Ooh. and it's like man yeah, so yeah. you know if i'm going to do all that work like i said one hard preseason set me up for a whole season of success you know yeah. to, to get the highest rank or the highest you know medal you could in the state tournament national tournament where here i got to do all that work for one payday and then start all over yeah. when really i could put three or four paydays on the back of that one training camp so you think you hold the advantage then because, you know, you've just fought, you came out healthy, you know, do you feel like you hold the advantage in the fight because you're, you're fresh? I hold the advantage because I'm smart yeah. and I'm old and I know <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about where you're training because are you still in, you're still going to Thailand to train? Yeah, um, I did four weeks there, so uh, working backwards, 12 weeks out from the fight all the way down to eight weeks out from the fight, I spent my preseason in Thailand. I had the last seven hard weeks of training in the USA and then fight week in New Jersey. Okay, um, wow. Since then, I uh, went home for a couple of days and straight out to the Fan Expo. Mm -hmm. uh, the Century Martial Arts Super Show was the two days before that. Okay. Then we had the fight night um, and things like that. And then we had the Fighter Summit. So I spent about nine, ten days in Vegas. Wow. So I did jump back into training in Vegas because that's where I got the call for this fight. Mm -hmm. um, jumped into some training at Drysdale Jiu-Jitsu. And then I went back to uh, the Smoky Mountains with my family. It was a family holiday that was planned. <laughs> so I had a smidgen of a thought to, to break my mom's heart. Um, they've been going there for like 15 years straight, and I've never been down there with them. So I uh, got that call, and I said, Mom, I might have to back out. And she was a bit bothered, but I decided, you know what, let's not waste the plane tickets. It's mountains. It's, you know, whatever. I had my personal trainer there. My girlfriend's a personal trainer. So she busted my butt a bit. We ran the mountains. And... Um, yeah, I kept working on the fitness and the weight, and I made sure I had some sprints in me. And um, I finished camp just, you know, hanging out in Illinois. My, my Australian coach is here, so, yeah, we busted bum last week, and here we are in fight week again. You know, a lot of guys are going to Thailand. Um, I mean, Roger Huerta, yeah. <laughs> well, just explain to us why. I mean, obviously there's a lot of history. you got the, the Muay Thai kickboxing background. Um, are they, is, is the, are the fans, are the people of Thailand rabid about uh, mixed martial arts? Uh, I don't think they're huge on mixed martial arts, but here's the fact is you're basically in a, a campus, mm -hmm. a martial arts campus. You know, you've got the Krabi Kabong, the old style Muay Thai. You've got the kickboxing Muay Thai that's, you know, basically the techniques used in Lumpini and the stuff that's really working now. Um, we've got Jiu Jitsu Black Belt out there from BTT. Uh, we just hired Roger Huerta. Yeah. Um, I haven't even coached on the mats as the official coach mm -hmm. yet, yeah. you know, so um, we've got a nice strong system. and. You know, the housing, the food, the support staff, they've got, you know, an AV team that puts themselves out there for the fight team and, and for VIP fighters that come out. So free high-definition video and sponsor packages can be made of that. Um, the one thing, you forget about everything else, man. You don't have to do your laundry. You don't have to clean. You don't have to cook. And that sounds cool when I say it, but until you're living it for two weeks, you don't really get it yeah. you know like I thought you know Ray Elby when he first invited me out there oh this would be cool I get to train and there's some kickboxing and awesome and I thought you know it's gonna be kind of a cool little chapter I didn't really expect the paradigm shift the mental shift on the way I look at the world on the way I look at the sport um, and it kind of helped me with this gypsy lifestyle I sat and went you know that's kind of the in-between I can fly there mm -hmm. stop over in London just for a couple of days to yeah. get to the US but I save so much money living in Thailand totally. as opposed to living anywhere else so on every level you're gonna change your perspective and it changed the way I plan my life um, just going there now that I'm living there six months of next year I'm a happy man you know no bills I actually get an income uh, on top of that yeah. so it's just amazing 
Now your cartwheel kick. Are you, do you like to throw that in every fight? I mean, is, is this like a signature thing for you? Because you're, you're wondering if guys maybe just know that it's coming. Yeah, I mean, I threw it in about 18 fights in a row. Yeah. I think I missed one fight in that 18 just because I finished the guy uh, early. It was the guy that I first arrowed for. I choked him like a minute and a half. Um, but it's just something fun, you know what I mean? And if the guy's not a great wrestler and doesn't want to jump on the ground with me anyway, it's a free kick just like any other kick. You know, he's not going to jump on top of me if he doesn't want to be on the ground with me. Chris Lytle, that yeah. was free. He yeah. didn't want to jump on top of me. No. You know what I mean? So it was just a free kick just like a roundhouse. He blocked it, and we moved on. Last question for you. You're visualizing. How's the fight going to end for you? Here we go. <laughs> you heard it. Brian Ebersole here on MMASucka.com. Really appreciate it, Brian. Good luck to you. Thanks.